Snow Tracks is sponsored by Skidoo Snowmobiles. Experience that Skidoo feeling. Yamaha revs your heart. And by FXR Racing. Maximum versatility for all conditions. I get a lot of opportunities to travel to Quebec. Anywhere I go in Quebec are always above anywhere else. It's always top notch. And this trip was no different. I don't like to come here by myself because the excitement you feel and the fun you have when you're here in Quebec, you gotta share it with somebody, you just have to. One of my oldest friends, Stefan, he's been on the show before, we've done a bunch of stories together. Um, so I've known Luke for almost the past 30 years. Uh, it's been a really long time, but yeah, ever since we were kids, we grew up together, hung out together, and um, I've had the opportunity to uh, go with Luke on several snow tracks trips and even dirt tracks trips as well. So the region we are traveling to is called USG Bay James. Surprisingly accessible for a lot of people despite how far north it is, the drive was really easy for Stefan and I from central Ontario. This region is famous for early and late snow. Very few places in North America can you ride this early. The place that Stefan and I were staying on our first night was called Marina Shabugamu and it's basically like 10 kilometers outside the actual town of Shibugamu, not very far. Really a nice spot because when we went into the cabin, it was freshly refurbished, freshly updated with very modern look. And the nicest part about Marina Shibugamu though was their restaurant. Their main lodge has, I mean, it's a five-star restaurant. That's what it looks like when you walk in. It's as nice as any restaurant I've ever been in, in any big city. Um, and of course, we're in Quebec, so the food is as good as any five-star restaurant you go to. Had breakfast there. We met up with our contact in this area. His name's Dex. Great guy, had a lot of phone calls with him before the trip. Knew he was a super passionate snowmobiler. Perfect guy to hook up with snow tracks and go for a ride. And for after breakfast, you know, there was nothing left to do besides get suited up and get on the road, get on the trail. I mean, that's what we're here for. The, the town of Shibugamu was pretty vibrant town. There was a lot of, lot of people, a lot of shops, um, a lot of stores, restaurants. All the amenities that, that you would really need were, were there. So it, uh, it, was, it was a really nice town to, to you know, go into and experience. And we're going to be riding from Shibugamu to Shepe, that are both uh, cities that are separate from the road and the snowmobile trail for about 40 minutes. And then we're gonna ride to Ujibugumu, that is a Cree community, uh, about 45 minutes from Shibugamu. Really up until this point, I hadn't had a chance to go out uh, for a snowmobile ride yet, just because it's very rare. Not too many places uh, you know, have that type of condition this early on. Well over three feet of snow, almost like an early Christmas present, you know, being able to come out and ride this early, especially in, in such like prime conditions. Even back at home, mid winter, you know, when winter has hit its peak, it's still, you know, this was, I would say even, even better. It's definitely worth the trip. If you snowmobile, you need to come here because you won't be disappointed. It's, it's truly a great experience. To say these trails were perfect doesn't, doesn't really come close. You could have rolled a marble down most of these trails. We were the first ones on it, even though they had been groomed a day prior. That doesn't happen anywhere else. It said it's not busy. You can ride here all day and see a handful of sleds maybe. That means that the trails are safe because there's not a ton of people on them, but also they don't get wrecked. Most places when you ride out in the morning on a great trail, by the time you ride back in the afternoon, that trail's rough. Beyond that, the trails themselves, they're just spectacular. We rode 
tight woods, really scenic, beautiful woods trails. Just high speeds and super fun. And again, perfectly maintained. So the, the variety of trails that you find here, it's just very, very diverse. And I think that's a real important factor when you go to a new place to ride is to understand that you're not just gonna go ride hydro lines all day, every day. You're not just gonna go ride tight bush all the time that's, that's slower speeds. You get a mix. So each day that you ride is a different experience. For my per perception, it's hard to tell in comparison with any trail in Quebec because I've been riding mostly here about what we hear at the snow show for all the real snowmobilers that do a lot of mileage. They love our region and we, they, we always have good comment because they say it's snowy like uh, the Gaspésie, but it's an highway because there's no traffic. Always do like this with their hand and they say it's flat. It's an highway, we can ride many mileage in one day. As for our local trail, they're open and they're ready by the first couple weeks of December every year and sometimes earlier than that. And they last for the last month, uh, the last week of April. When we left in the morning, Dex told us that we were gonna ride to a specific spot for lunch. And it was something I had never heard of before. Now I've heard of clubs having warming huts and clubhouses. I've never heard of a snowmobile club running a restaurant on the trail. But that's exactly what, what this area has to offer. It's, it's super cool. Right on the side of the trail, you pull right up, the groomer comes right through the front yard, and it's a nice looking building. It's not, you know, like run down, it's not, doesn't look gross. Walk inside, well finished, lots of tables, lots of chairs, places to warm up, all kinds of spots to put your gear. So we were freezing by the time we got in at lunch. We needed to get warm. It was a really unique experience that I haven't seen anywhere else, but one that to me made a lot of sense and should be everywhere because it was perfect. After we were finished with our lunch, the, the clubhouse restaurant, you know, it was back on the trails and I could have ridden all afternoon. I wasn't even thinking about eating dinner. You know, we put on a lot of miles and we had a lot of miles to put on in the afternoon again. Snowmobiling is really important to us because it's one of the big industries in the winter and it's a way of life of people that live here. Almost everybody owns a snowmobile. If it's not a mountain or a trail sled, it's gonna be something to go ice fishing or to work. Almost everybody owns a pickup truck and a snowmobile. So when you talk to people, if you get stuck, if you broke, people knows what you're talking about. They're helpful, they, they have knowledge about mechanical, about the, about the trail, where to go. That I think the simple way to, to call it is way of life. It's, it's a way of life for us to snowmobile in the winter. Near the end of our, our trail ride for the day, we, we stopped at a First Nations community. Right on the Ujibugamu community. So it was pretty neat, this building that's super accessible for everybody. Just because it's in this community doesn't mean that everybody isn't welcome, everyone is. So we thought, let's take in a little bit of the history, let's take in a little bit of the culture of this area. And I always love to do that. If you're gonna come to a spot, you owe it to the people there, you owe it to the spot that you're coming to, to learn a little bit about it and then take something away from it as you go home. They had this cultural uh, museum um, that was there that, that I guess is a pretty popular place to, to go. So we, we stopped, we had a, had a tour of, of the museum. We got to experience and learn about the, the Cree culture and, and, and history. It's a must do if you pass by the area. Most, most of the time, maybe except on holidays, uh, uh, it's, it's open every day and it, it's, uh, if, if I were a visitor and for what I know, I'll stop by for sure. It's interesting to see how many of the actual traditions are still kept alive and still used today. I think a lot of times people think that in these communities it's all just modern and every, you know, all, a lot of the traditions have just been abandoned, but that's actually not the case. A lot of them are continued on the way they always have been. And that's pretty interesting. I think that's neat. After we were done at the, the Cree Museum, you know, we had a, a ride back. This trip to the EOSG Bay James region of Quebec has been, has been another Quebec experience. It's been as good as the rest of them, if not better in some cases. I mean, snowmobilers, we want great trails. Here, we rode out on fresh tracks on the right side of the trail and rode home on fresh tracks on the left side of the trail. It was crazy how, how perfect everything was, but 
We're willing to forgive a lot of stuff that's not great if we have great trails. Accommodation can be uh, food can be okay, trails are great, we're all happy. But in Quebec, you get those great trails, but you also get excellent accommodation, you also get excellent food, and you also get excellent people. But no matter what, make sure you put this area on your list of places to visit early in the season, visit late in the season when there's nowhere else to ride. That's the perfect time. It was a pretty nice trip. We, we've been riding along a couple good trail together. The trail was in perfect condition. That was a little chilly, but it's part of the winter. It'll be something that I will talk to my friends about, to my family. I will be telling people that you need to come to this area to ride. As far as what I've experienced snowmobiling, this is probably in the top two as far as, you know, best uh, snowmobile destinations that I've experienced so far. So it was really a lot of fun. And our, our destination wasn't back to the marina. We were going to another hotel right in the town of Shibugamu called Hotel Shibugamu. You know, another equally as great place, equally as good as all the places you stay at in Quebec, you know. Very unique from the road. It was right on Main Street in Shibugamu. The hotel itself was exactly what we needed after a long cold day i mean but the cold was 100 percent worth it to get this experience and the hotel was cozy so it was perfect to end a trip like this at great accommodation it was really enjoyable relaxing experience of snowmobiling in quebec overall this place really offers just about everything you could possibly want trail tech is sponsored by princess auto make it work So you just bought yourself a Renegade XRS. It's fully loaded, ready to blaze the trail and ride with your most aggressive sled crew. But what if you want to notch it back a step and go with your significant other on a two-up trail touring style weekend away? Did you buy the wrong sled? Say it ain't so. No, no, you didn't buy the wrong sled, but you are gonna need to get yourself a few key BRP accessories to make this style of riding possible on your Renegade XRS. Or hey, maybe it's not just a single trip, but a stipulation by the boss that you gotta be able to take along one of the kiddos or an extra passenger if you wanna buy that fancy new Rennie XRS. And thankfully, we're here to help you to be able to not only justify those requirements, but do it in an easy and quick one-stop shop type way, making your trailblazing, mogul-chewing Renegade XRS a safe bet to be able to do more than just go fast on the weekends with the crew. One of the keys to making this sled into a high miler, weekend warrior, saddlebagger, or whatever you like to call destination riding, is the link system. And right up front, I gotta get the easy to install link mounts onto the sled or we aren't transforming anything. Link mounts are easy to understand, easy to install, and easy to use. They're simple and secure and give you the confidence that anything with the link logo will mount up quickly and fit. Your Skidoo dealer stocks all kinds of link accessories and mounts and will get you hooked up with whatever you need to get the job done, no matter what that job may be. Now before I put these link mounts to use, I'm going to have to go ahead and address the issue of a two-up passenger. The Link 1 Plus 1 seat is a pretty good option here. While it does require you to completely remove your stock seat, it means the new two-up specific seat is now designed for two-up rider ergonomics and comfort. And because of the smartly designed system, it's toolless after you do the first installation and was designed to work with the link system that securely attaches the rearmost portion of the passenger seat to the tunnel of the sled via two link mounts. While this system does not include heated hand grips or an RCA heated shield, it also means that you don't have to wire any of that stuff and therefore makes the install pretty quick and simple. Now, big weekend trips or saddlebagging overnight requires the need for stuff because in the wintertime, nobody travels anywhere without some extra gear. And this is where the link system comes into play yet again. We have a combo of a 40 liter tunnel bag as well as dual saddlebags, adding in another 26 total liters of storage for a combined total of 66 liters of storage or more than enough to keep your significant other happy with all the amenities you'll both need for a fun weekend adventure. Now, one of the important features about the Link Saddlebag Kit is that they work in conjunction with other tunnel-mounted Link accessories so that you're not limited to just one or the other. 
And today, the tunnel bag that we're combining the bags with is the 40-liter thermoformed semi-rigid design. It offers multiple interior storage pocket compartments as well as a soft goggle pocket, so it's more functional for everyday riding as well as larger touring trips. The cover can be completely removed, and like the saddle bags, you can remove all storage products with just the flip of a link lever to be able to take all of your gear inside the hotel, house, or the shop with ease. Now, if you're racking up miles mid-winter, I think we all know that the stock windshield, while it looks cool, isn't going to do much for you over the long haul when it's minus 30 outside. And when it comes to the XRS, you have a new and very functional option by the way of the adjustable height low to medium Gen 4 screen. It offers height adjustment of 14.5 to 17 inches and will push all that cold air up and out of your way, also adding increased warmth for your passenger on the back. And one of the best features is that you don't have to go to a super huge full height width windshield and sacrifice the cool looks of your XRS to gain warmth. In the low setting, the windshield looks aggressive and stylish, and with nothing more than a flip of a lever, you can take advantage of an extra 2.5 inches of extension and likewise warmth. Buying the right sled can be tough because many times we have more than one application or discipline that we want that sled to fit into. But when you use quality parts like I showed you today from Skidoo, you can transform your sled without sacrificing the cool factor that we all know and love. In my opinion, the single most important part of any crossover sled that's trying to achieve that magical 50-50 designation is a trail sled front suspension and geometry. If a manufacturer wants to claim that their crossover sled is 50-50 or even more off-trail based 60-40, the sled has to at least handle like a trail sled. And this is where so many crossover sleds have got it very wrong. This has included Yamaha in the past, but this all changes in 2020 with the new XTX LE146. A very valid question would be, what makes this XTX so worthy of being called a true crossover? And the best place to start answering this question is at the front. What you're looking at is Yamaha's new ARCS front end, and it is an all new design. But what's most important about it in the context of the XTX is that it's a trail front end that's a full 42 inches wide. New spindles have an increase in distance between the mount of the lower A-arm and the saddle mount of the ski. The increase is about 1.5 inches, and it actually raises the front end of the sled up, but lowers the roll center. It also increases overall front end ground clearance, which is great for off-trail riding. But that's just a secondary benefit. The best part of this front end is how it affects the sled's on-trail handling. The sled turns in more precisely and it holds its line through a corner more predictably. Ride compliance is also improved thanks to both the new geometry and a set of Snowtrax TV favorite Fox QS3 shocks. On a trail sled, this front end will be a big improvement, but on a crossover, especially one replacing a mountain front end, it's a massive improvement. The last thing I have to say about the front end on the XTX is something I have been waiting to say about a Yamaha for a long time. The XTX features a new single keel crossover specific ski. Yes, I said single keel. This is not a tuner ski. And as I'm sure you can imagine, this one small change alone makes an almost immeasurable improvement in handling. Now that we're done with the front end, it's time to move to the rear end of the XTX and talk about another one of its all new upgrades for 2020. Many a great crossover platform has been ruined by the utilization of a dedicated mountain skid. The new skid found in the XTX LE is more of a hybrid between a trail and a mountain skid. Its 146 inch length is obviously biased to off-trail riding, but its on-trail ride quality definitely exceeded my expectations. It's an uncoupled design, so it does a good job of transferring weight, and it soaks up everything from typical trail chatter to gnarly moguls with a composure we've yet to see from any Yamaha crossover. So the XTX LE has got a trail front end that handles and rides great, and a hybrid rear end that has surprised us with how good it handles bumps on the trail. I guess the only question left to answer is, how good is this setup off-trail? For starters, this front end, even at 42 inches wide, still handles great off-trail. Not as good as a narrow mountain front end, but every bit as good as you could expect from a 50-50 crossover. The skid on our 146 LE is wrapped in a 1.6 Cobra, so not a super deep lug. But for typical flatland off-trail riding, this skid and track combo works excellent. On top of all this, this XTX is a sidewinder, and we all know what that means. 180 plus horsepower from its turbocharged three-cylinder mill. 
This kind of power is always a good thing on or off trail, but it does come at a cost. No, I'm not talking about money, I'm talking about weight. The extra weight of this four-stroke powerhouse is immediately noticeable off-trail. But that doesn't mean it's a bad off-trail sled. The power does help mask a large percentage of said weight, but it's still there and the trade-offs it requires must be understood. For 2020, the LE is Yamaha's top-of-the-line package and includes extras like a heated mountain seat, visor outlet, tail bag, goggle bag, lightweight disc brake rotor, and it's available only in the blue-black color scheme you see here, which is fine with me because it's dead sexy. The only major thing I have to complain about on this sled is the seat. This mountain seat is at a very strange angle for sit-down riding, which is something you're going to do a lot of on a crossover sled. Is it a true 50-50? No, not quite. I'd put it more at a 45-55 crossover. Its on-trail percentage only suffers a tiny bit due to a skid that's not quite as good as a dedicated on-trail skid but this skid does help it gain a few extra points off trail. So if you're looking for the most powerful crossover sled in history, one whose on-trail handling is darn close to as good as its off-trail handling, you really only have one choice, Yamaha's 2020 XTX LE 146. Lucky for you, it's a great choice. Snow Tracks has been sponsored by Polaris Snowmobiles. MBRP Performance Exhaust, Race Inspired, Trail Proven, and by Hercules Tire, Ride on Our Strength. If you like what you've just seen, click the subscribe button and comment below. And make sure you check out all of our great videos on Snowtracks TV's YouTube channel.